Hello, hello, and welcome to Ant's Gaming Suite. This is your host, Anthony, back with another video on Valorant here. Hope you guys have been well and fantastic. I know it is a crazy world. 2020 might be a rider for you, but anyway, hope it's all good for you on your end as well. In today's video, we will be discussing the foundations and tips and tricks for beginners about to start in the ventures of Valorant here. Whether you're a first time playing a tactical first person shooter or you have played other tactical first person shooter and just want a refresher, well, this is the video for you here. Um, so if you did enjoy the content of the video, be sure to hit that like, hit that subscribe and hit that notification bell for free weekly Valorant videos. Uh, gaming contents on this channel and a lot more that uh, we'll be offering and uploading so make sure you guys stay tuned for that one Anyway, for those of you who are new to the video, what is Valorant? All right, so Valorant is essentially a free multiplayer uh, Five on five first person tactical shooter like the game of CSGO if you played that Rainbow Siege, Crossfire and there's many more uh, titles out there in the game genre Um it is a essentially a defuse the bomb situation where you know you start off one side as defense and the other side as an offensive team and then the defensive team has pretty much has two side or sometimes three side in Valorant here um, you gotta protect the bomb site without without dying or essentially you can win the round by simply eliminate your foes and the round is essentially made up of 24 rounds here. You do switch sides uh, halfway mark, which is at the 12 mark here. First 10 to reach 13, or unless you hit a tie bracket at 12 and 12, you will go into overtime, which you do have the option of either drawing the game or continuing on to try and get that big W. So we're going to move on to the first tip here. Um, the first tip I have as a beginner is when you're starting out into the game, uh, you should at least try and master two to three different agents across three different uh, across several different class roles here There are four main roles here that you can pick into the game here, and I'll go into depth as of right now So the first class that we're going to be talking about is the controller role here So the controller roles are essentially made up of Viper, Brim, and Omen So these particular classes are pretty much essential into overtaking a site here um, These classes in particular have a lot of utilities in order to, you know, slow the enemy if you like Smoke a different section, smoke CT, smoke T It's all really up to you and how depending how you play it out But they are very an essential role as a controller So my advice is for you to either to learn Brim or to learn Omen here. There's a monetary advice here. Viper isn't too much of a great agent at the time being, and it is a very highly likely agent to be picked at this time. Anyway, we're going to move on to the next one here. The next one is Sentinels here. So Sentinels are a defensive expert who will be able to lock down sides. So they're very strong in defensive play. So we have agents such as Sage here who can typically heal your teammate. Uh, res your teammate, put up a wall. However, due to the recent patch of 1.07, she is absolutely horrendous here. But on my take on that one, she's still just as good of an agent as she is with a bit of downside to it. But anyway, I will get into that video at a later stage. Um, the other two agents that are in the Sentinel category is Cypher, who is tactical in tripwires and cameras and locating your targets and then we do have killjoy here she's a recent new agent to the patch of 1.06 here she has a nano swarm which you can lock down she has an ultimate where you can essentially be stuck down for about eight seconds if you're still remaining in it with the ability to not be able to shoot or cast spells and they can pretty much obliterate you so moving on to the next category here we have the initiator right so the initiator is an essential role into this game here. I guess you can say mm, they're kind of like the semi-fraggers. Um, they like to push sites, pick up information, and see what other people are doing. They can flash over time. So they get, they're more of the intel gathering kind of player or heroes, you can say, or agents. Uh, but in this particular categories, we only have two in this agent here. So we have Sova, who can shoot a dart, shoot an arrow that does damage and reveals the target with one of his arrows, as well as shoot through wards with his laser beam of a weapon. Next, we have the Breach here. Breach is an agent that has recently been buffed. Um, he's able to flash now, which lasts forever. We have his um, concussion, 
with his ultimate, we have his stun. So these two characters are very useful when entering a site or even trying to find someone that's around the corner. The other character or the other category I should say is the final and last one, which is the entry fragger. They're typically the, the fragger of the team or the carry. Um, who are always looking to look for the engagement to try and be able to get into sites more or try to pick off one side and rotate to another side. So these guys are very offensive in terms of attacking. They can have flash, they can have dash, they can have rockets and all sort of utilities. Furthermore to that one, there are three agents into this category of the duelist here. There is Phoenix, Jet and Ray. So Phoenix to be able to flash, he can resurrect with his ulti. We have Jet here who can dash as well. Um, has a short time frame on three smokes here and throws knives, which is fairly typically cool for me here. Raze, she can shoot a bazooka, I tell ya. And she is, if you hear the a sound of her ulti, you better run, I tell ya. Raze is an absolutely crazy, crazy agent. If you do know how to take flight to women, and when I say flight, using his jump pads and uh, be able to fly around the map, but there are more guys that in the detail when I will get to that. And yeah, so that's my first tip, right? So make sure you guys learn some of the agents here. Make sure you have a huge variety. That is tip number one here. Tip number two. You need to understand and what I've noticed is that not a lot of people understand what the map call out is. My advice is to jump into a practice lobby here. Um, take a look around. There are four maps. There are Bind, Split, Haven, and Ascent. Jump on the maps. Make the huge map expand here and look at the different callouts here. Uh, over time, over repetitive action, you will be able to grasp the callout names, which makes it a lot easier. So that is tip number two for me. I'm going to go straight to tip number three here. Tip number three has to do with your settings here. So in every game there is a crosshair in every first FPS game here. So my advice is to make sure you start any game. Jump into a practice lobby or a shootout range here and simply play around with the color, crosshair, the size of a crosshair, um, put on different assistance, whether you want a dot center or you want movement correction or firing correction. That is all up to personal choice here. So make sure tip number three is you go into your practice lobby and do that and make something that you're fairly comfortable with. Tip number four here, mouse sensitivity, okay? I know there are, there might be a number of people who don't have a gaming mouse and that's okay. My advice is once again, jump into the practice lobby, play around with your game settings, right? So when I say game settings, so if you have a gaming mouse, maybe just play around which, with between a 400 to 800 DPI mouse function here. And simply you gotta change the in-game mouse sensitivity as well. So when you go into your game in-game in mouse sensitivity, make sure is it too fast for you or is it too slow for you? Simply make it at a level or a sensitivity level that you can adjust to fairly easy and makes things a lot more easier for you to get to the target and knock them out before they could get to you. So for me, if you want to know what my sensitivities are, it is a DPI of 400 and the in-game mouse is a 0 0.5. Tip number five. So tip number five is something very common that I have noticed at certain points in the game. Um, is communication here, right? So there are times when you do have to communicate with your team. My advice is when you're playing competitive or even on Reddit, just try to be someone who try to um, say, that, okay, you spotted Cypher at long A or, or long B or showers or in that corner, ping it. If you don't know the corner, just ping it. You know, it's like there's a character, a character there. Tell them, communicate your team. Let them know that there is an enemy there. This is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to smoke, you know? That is my tip number five here is to make sure you communicate. If you die, even even if you die within a certain area within the map, make sure you tell your friend, I got knocked out from here, I'm not too sure where. And uh, yeah. Moving on to tip number six here. Uh, so tip number six is something that I've seen in a lot of my gameplays as well, between I'd say gold or even lower, even sometimes platinum, right? Is the ability to save your economy. So what I say here, what, what I'm talking about here in this economy is that do not simply force buy uh, your weapons, even if you don't have the enough funds. It's better to save on an economy or ecosystem in which you'll be able to buy a Vandal or a Phantom for the next round. Because you don't want to be buying like an SMG, for example, the Stinger or the Spectre, and just be able to and be obliterated by the teammate who's using a Vandal. You know, there are times when you should force buy and there are times that you shouldn't. So be sure to understand when you should 
um, eco and when you shouldn't eco. So that's my tip number six here. Uh, tip number seven on the list, and this is the last tip that I have for Valorant beginners here. Do not be afraid to stop and shoot, all right? So the game mechanics in Valorant is that you got to be able to either minimize your movement before you shoot because you don't want to be moving around and shooting because the spray bullets will be going all around the place. It'll be inaccurate and you won't be able to hit your target. So my advice is do not move. Do not be afraid. Stop where you want. If you see an enemy, stop dead set. Move your hands off the keyboard if you have to. Take a shot and then finish them off before you run away. So that's the game mechanic of the... Um, well, tip number seven here. My advice as well, um, just a bonus one here. Before you even play competitive, uh, jump into a practice lobby. There are deathmatch modes available to you as well. Jump into that and have a fun play. Warm up your hands, warm up your rest, do a bit of stretch, and don't forget to drink water and take a short break. Because uh, sometimes, you know, being tilted too much can make the game worse as you progressively play. So make sure you do take that break. Go for a sunshine walk or a run. Really up to you. But anyway, hope you guys enjoyed my tip. Those are my seven tips for beginners. I will be making consistently more guide here. I did take a short break. So, you know, I'm back to making a lot more videos and playing a lot more games on my stream. Um, if you guys enjoyed that, make sure you jump over to my stream as well. I am streaming twice a week here. I'm streaming on a Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. AES time. I'm streaming on Saturdays at 8.30 p.m. AES time. So be sure just to jump over there. Say hi to me. I'm a nice, friendly guy. I'm not going to bite you. So jump over, say hi. And don't forget to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe on my channel. That would be great. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you so much for everyone who has been watching my content. I appreciate that so much. And yeah, until next time, I'll see you guys in the next one. And peace out.